All right, you've probably just opened your new HP and uh, you've booted up. First thing you want to do, well, on your screen, probably two programs are going to appear. One is called Jing, J-I-N-G. That's a screencasting program. It's a pretty good program. It's freeware. The only problem is you can only do a five-minute screencast. So I've actually uninstalled it from this particular machine. Uh, I did that by clicking uh, in the red square, red cancel, cancel, getting out of the program, and then I just went to File, Control Panel, uh, Uninstall a Program, and I scrolled my way down until I got to Jing, J-I-N-G, uninstalled it. And now it knows no longer going to open whenever you start up your machine. I find programs that open at startup irritating, so I try and avoid them whenever possible. Second program you can uninstall is called Cam Studio. I initially recommended to the district that this be the program that we use. It's also freeware. However, I found one since then that I think works a little better. So if you want to uninstall Cam Studio, C A M S T U D I O R, that's S T D, no R, you can as well. Uh, most of you also then, you're probably having uh, a screen that looks something like this open up. I think. That thing up there. Again, I hate stuff that opens at the beginning of my startup menu. So what I did right away was I carefully went and you'll see kind of a little wrench thing sitting right there. I left clicked on it. And I turned off the launch HP advisor automatically on startup because I don't want stuff taking up memory that I don't know about and that not uh, that I'm not going to use so I would encourage you to do that as well then you'll have a bit more memory there's lots of other icons on here what I would do now is I would right click and I would go new folder and I would call it desktop and most of this stuff I'm going to drag to the desktop Mozilla Firefox. I installed Firefox, so that was the first program I installed. I opened up Internet Explorer, Googled the word Firefox, and I installed that. Strongly encourage you to go to Firefox over Internet Explorer, but I'm going to drag that into there so it's out of the way. I'm going to end up uninstalling the Norton Internet Security thingy. Microsoft Office 60-day trial. I'm going to right-click and hit Delete. We've paid for Microsoft Office. I don't need the shortcut to the 60-day trial. My HP games, I'll drag that into that folder. Comic Life, I'll drag that into that folder. Uh, eBay, I'm going to get rid of that because I'm not planning on selling stuff on eBay on a school computer. FileZilla, nice little program, going to get rid of that. GeoGebra, very powerful geometry program. If you're teaching Math 8 or 9 this year with the new geometry stuff or the old Math 11, Play around with it. Do a Google for GeoGebra tutorials and you'll go, holy smokes, I can't believe this is free. It's basically Geometer Sketchpad, but for free. But that's going to go there. GIMP is like a Photoshop program. Oh, by the way, you may be noticing my icons scroll up as I get rid of them. That's because I went on the blank area of the screen, right-click, view, and I turned on auto-arrange. I don't like big gaps in my icons. It's a personal preference. GIMP, this is a freeware Photoshop equivalent. Going to go there. Google Earth, lovely program, also going to go in there. Google SketchUp, this is basically a free CAD CAM program for architecture. You, if you're doing volume and measurement with your grade 8s or 9s, you could really do some neat stuff. Do a tutorial for Google SketchUp, Google that, and you'll find some incredible stuff. Uh, HP Help and Support, it's going to go there. HP Media Smart, I guess that's the media thing, it's going to go there. HP Total Care Advisor is going to go there. Media Player is going to go there. PDF Creator, I'm going to leave on the desktop temporarily. Picasa, this is the freeware Google uh, Photoshop photo program. Really nice. Going to go there. I'm a big Google fan if you haven't clued in already. Scribius, I have no idea what that is. I think it's a drawing program. Songbird, I think it's a music program. Blender, I think it's a multimedia program. VLC Media Player, this is the end-all, be-all uh, media player in that uh, it'll play almost anything. I'm actually going to install a couple of other media players that play 
almost anything and have a little nicer interface. But I always leave VLC. It's my last resort. If someone gives me a file and I can't play it, usually I'll open it in VLC and then it will play. However, that's going to go right there. Winplot, this is a lovely Windows graphing program. If you Google Winplot tutorials, you'll find a series of video tutorials and within about oh, 20 minutes you can be making piecewise functions with hollow circles on one end and shaded circles on the other end. Very power powerful and it lets you just paste them right into a Word document. So I'm going to leave that on the desktop. AVG Free, this is our antivirus program. Uh, I'm going to leave that on the desktop. CCleaner, I installed this. This was the second program I installed. If you Google CCleaner, this is a computer cleanup program. It actually stands for Crap Cleaner, believe it or not. It's freeware. It's great. It really streamlines things. I run this every month or so. It clears out your internet cache, finds any leftover strings of files, clear those, clears those out. It's also got a registry cleaner, which also speeds up your machine. So I encourage you, do a Google search for CCleaner and install it. Google Chrome, this is an alternate browser. I find Google Chrome has a wicked fast Java engine. I use it for uh, ESIS as opposed to Firefox. This is a provincial exam I'm going to use for a sample program. This is Adobe Reader, which I just ran and had to update about six times. Okay, so there's what my desktop is going to look like. Now, what I'm going to show you in this video is how to configure the... Uh, send to OneNote feature, which does not exist for Microsoft uh, Office 2007 OneNote 64-bit edition. We have found a free workaround, and it's basically using this PDF creator printer driver and convincing the computer that it's the send to OneNote printer driver. However, I think I'm going to do that in another podcast now because I don't want this podcast to be too long.